Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah. Today is Vlognica day three and actually you're getting two videos from me today because it's a Tuesday so it's my normal upload day on the main Hannah Witten channel so head over there if you also want to watch that after you finish watching this one. So this video idea came about because my friends Rosianna and Sana were over recently and we were having a look at my bookshelf and I was picking out all of these books that I had read before I got into YouTube. Basically like recommendations from my parents, things that I'd just seen on a bookshelf and was like, that looks cool. Books like that rather than books that I see my friends or people that I follow or like book influencer people recommending and, and especially like books that I read before I kind of knew about the publishing world. We were having big long chats about how difficult it is sometimes to find obscure books or books that we might really love when we're like so in booktube, so in bookstagram, so in the like London publishing world that it just feels like those are all of the books that we should be reading to like be relevant and be able to like have conversations with people about books because those are the books that everyone's talking about and so you're like ah I have to read those books and you get big book FOMO. But I was going through my shelf and because I did a big declutter recently it was really obvious to me a lot of the books that I'd decided to keep were books that I read before I was influenced by any of that stuff which can sometimes seem hierarchical and even though I've read loads of great books since being recommended things from um, YouTube or like people in publishing there's something <laughs> that feels I don't know it just feels really close to home a lot of these books especially because most of the books that I'm going to show you are ones that I just picked off my parents bookshelf or my mum and dad like recommended them to me once they thought I was like old enough to read it. So I was showing Rosianna and Sana these books and being like, oh my god, I loved it, and like, blah, 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 this is what I think I remember it's about. And they were like, this is a video. And I was like, is it? Would this be interesting? So Rosianna and Sana, this video is for you, and if anyone else enjoys it, finds it interesting, then it's also for you. We can make it a tag. I know it's like Christmas Eve right now, so no one's making videos. But if you feel like sharing books that you read and loved before you discovered like the internet and people recommending books I'd love to hear what they are and if any of them are weird and obscure a lot of mine are also quite famous books because that would have been like what my parents were reading I don't know so these are books that I read before booktube so I started making youtube videos when I was 19 so most of these I would have read as a teenager as a teenager these these are all adult fiction I'm not including like Harry Potter <laughs> <laughs> in these because obviously I read them before booktube. We have Perfume by Patrick Suskind. Oh god. This is translated. It was originally in German and it was made into a movie. However, I still haven't seen that movie but I'm pretty sure I read this around the time that the movie was coming out because I think my mum read it for her book club and then just passed it on to me and oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what Perfume is about, it's about this man who has an impeccable sense of smell. Like, he can smell every detail. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love this book, especially because it's translated. Because of the way that the author describes smells in so much detail and using words you would never have thought to use to describe smell. And yet you're like, uh-huh, I get it. But also the fact that it's translated. So it would have been that detailed and that beautiful in German and then a translator came along and like did that for English I'm like Phew. but it's the story of a murderer and basically this man with this sense of smell is trying to find the most beautiful smell and turns out virgins virgins he is obsessed with the smell of virgins and so he goes around murdering a bunch of virgins and then like extracting their smell from their skin and making the most beautiful, best perfume, most potent, most alluring, obsessive perfume. It's real creepy and weird, but stunningly written. Oh, I feel like I need to say, so all of these books I've only ever read once because I'm not really a rereader. However, when I was going through these with Rosianna and Sana, I was like, oh, 
I do want to reread these because I can barely remember what happens in most of them. I'm trying to explain what is going on in them. And I'm like, eh, but I remember loving it. And so maybe I should reread. And this is a prime example of that. The Raw Shark Text by Stephen Hall. This was given to me by my dad. My dad was obsessed with this and he was like, Hannah, please read this. So I read it and my dad is the only other person in the world who I know who has read this. And so he's the only person who I've ever talked to about this book. And so now I'm like, hey people, I've read this book. Has anyone else read this book? Um, even though, when was it published? 2007, so I was 15. Now this is one with a really weird plot and I'm trying to think what I can remember and how to explain things. Also it's super about memory. Basically, our main guy wakes up with none of his memories. He finds a letter in the house that he wakes up in being like, hey mate, it's me, it's you. So you don't remember anything, cool. Um, <laughs> and then it just like goes from there. And then somehow he manages to like access old memories, maybe through letters or diaries or something. And it's mentioning like his girlfriend before he lost all of his memories. And his girlfriend had a smiley face tattoo on the back of her big toe, like on the bottom of her big toe. And then, he like meets this woman. Oh, and she dies? Does her girlfriend, his girlfriend die? I think his girlfriend dies. Oh, this is near the beginning, so it's like not super spoiler, but it also might not be true. So in his past, his girlfriend dies. Oh, this is so weird. Anyway, but then he meets this other woman in this current life whilst he's like adventuring and like trying to figure out what the hell is going on. She has a tattoo of a smiley face on her big toe, but she has a different name. And anyway, it's a weird, action adventure about memory, about text, about words, and about actual sharks made of paper that eat the words. And you're like in a sea of text. This is my really vague memory of it. I really need to reread this. But I have very strong memories of it being like an ocean of pages with words on them and then sharks coming. And then they had to like run away from the sharks and they can't get eaten by the sharks because their memories will get eaten along with them. Read it, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> the Outcast by Sadie Jones. I have no idea how I got my hands on this one. Maybe it was another one on my parents' shelf. It's very much a historical love story. I remember being obsessed with this book, but I don't know whether like 27 year old Hannah would like it. It's one of those ones I'm like, if any of these books are going to be problematic, it'll be this one. But I'm not sure how, because when I was reading this as a teenager, I didn't know. I was just like, oh, it's a love story and set in the past. It's like post-World War II. It's set in this really small town. It's about this boy. Does his mother die? Can't remember. His father was at war. I think it's over like a long period of time. And there's like other kids in this like small town as well and it's about all of their relationships and like as they grow up there's like one particular love interest with him but like not really they were like mates they you know like played together in the gardens and i think it's kind of like one of those stories where you learn about both of their like weird childhood traumas and then they kind of like come together in adulthood i think it takes place over like the span of a couple decades or maybe just one decade i'm not sure that's my pitch from what I can remember. Before I get on to my final two faves, I want to give some honorable mentions to these two, just because of how old they are and the covers of them. I mean, they were both published after the films of them came out because this one says, now a major film on it. And this one has uh, Jack Nicholson on the front cover. But still look how like old and battered this is. I love it. And both of these most likely came from my mother and her bookshelf. But this cover of The Colour Purple, oh, I just love it. It's gorgeous. And like, I'm not, I'm not a fan of film covers of books in general, but I can forgive this one because it's like so old. Mmm, it's got a good smell too. But yeah, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest and The Colour Purple were both books that I had read before booktube. Again, just taking them off my parents' bookshelf. The only reason I'm not putting these with the rest of my list is because I can't actually remember reading them. Whereas like all of the others, I vividly remember the experience of reading them, whereas these I don't. Next, we have The Beach by Alex Garland. I think I read this after I saw the film and I remember it was the summer when I was 16 and my first like serious boyfriend had just broken up with me. It was very sad and so, 
I just really remember that this is what I was reading over that summer. If you've seen the film, it's got Leonardo DiCaprio in it, Tilda Swinton. It's great. This is slightly different. Maybe more harrowing. More devastating. More creepy. Cultish. Just... Oh, it keeps your heart racing. Oh my goodness. Also, it's it's like quite a thick book and really little writing. But I remember plowing through this because every chapter is so short. Every chapter is like five pages. So you just feel like you're reading it really quick. It's like, duh, duh, this happens and this happens and this happens. I don't know if this is one that I could reread because it's such a disturbing, stressful read. It's very stressful, but also very satisfying. I think I think the only reason why I made it through it was because of the short chapters. Like, it's such a stressful read in terms of the plot, but because you're getting through it quite quickly, it feels satisfying. And finally, we have Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I think I pronounced that right. Again, this is another one that I picked up because of the film. I think I managed to read this before the film came out though. I just remember seeing trailers and being like, what is this? And then immediately going out and getting the book. Ooh, this might be the only book that I've shown you that is actually mine that I bought from a bookshop myself rather than just taking from my parents' bookshop. So that's cool. Never Let Me Go is basically about um, these three friends who like go to school together but their life is like a bit weird and they have something that they have to do that they were like designed and raised for. And it's about them coming to terms with their fate. Do I tell you what the fate is? Is it a spoiler? It's science fiction. You know the plot. It has Carrie Mulligan, Kira Knightley, and Andrew Garfield in the movie. But yet I still feel like I can't spoil it. I feel like when the film came out, not a lot of people loved it, but I was I was like, I'm fully, I was fully in. And there we have it. These are some books that I read and loved before BookTube. Doing this and reminiscing about these, one has made me want to read some of them again, and two has made me want to just like browse bookshops or browse my parents' bookshelf and just like see what people are reading who aren't influenced by booktube. I do love booktube, but sometimes I feel inadequate if I'm not reading all of the same books as everyone else, but then everyone ends up just reading the same books and that's boring. But yeah, those are some thoughts, some food for thought. Hope you're having a lovely Christmas Eve. Maybe you're just like chilling out reading. That's nice, that's a nice Christmas Eve. Let me know in the comments some books that you read before you discovered internet and booktube and recommendations that way. I'd love to hear about some obscure ones that maybe I haven't heard of before. I know that a lot of these are classics, they're not exactly obscure but still. Please like this video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. There'll be a video coming out tomorrow on Christmas! Yeah! Happy Hanukkah! Bye!